He's a very young chap. Um, I'm surprised they let him in the pub. He is that young. <laughs> uh, he's going to be doing juggling. Again, these are things that a, comp a competent compere would know in advance. And maybe write down. So yeah, rather than just being. So you're going to be juggling and there'll be some stuff. Okay, so we've got Lauren Scott. I, I don't like his name mainly because I can pronounce it. We've got Lauren Scott uh, coming and doing some stuff. Good evening, everybody. It's, uh, I haven't got the microphone, so I'm just going to have a shout. No, I don't want the microphone, alright? But it's great. It's great to be here in Cambridge at the Emperor. I've been at the Cambridge Club number two. I didn't want to perform in the number one, but anyway, I'd like to tell you a story. Now, the story is about how I first came to Cambridge. Now, when I first came to Cambridge, it was my 18th birthday, and my dad sat me down for a serious chat. Now, when I say serious chat, well, let's call it more of a lecture, right? I wasn't expected to do much of the talk. So, there he was, and he sits me down, and he asks me, Son, what do you want to do when you grow up? Well, I didn't know what I wanted to do when I was 18. Sit down, thinking, oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, put on the spot. Now, I'll tell you, my dad, a story about my dad. My dad is a very, very, very serious man, all right? I mean, everybody in the room is going to say his father's strict, right? Everybody understand? Everybody have an overbearing father? Well, mine is even stricter. So when my dad used to come home from work every night, he used to say to my mum the first words when he walked in the room were, damage report. <laughs> I've got three older brothers, ladies and gentlemen, and no doubt we were terrors. My mum was a little bit ill when we were growing up, so we just roamed free. So literally my dad walked in the room and said, damage report. And my mum had to go through and list every single bad thing that we had done. My dad def definitely was the disciplinarian of the family, and he was the one that had to tell us all off. So, now you get a series for my, for my panic when he says, like an, uh, an idea, when he says, what do you want to do when you grow up? I, I applied to go to university. I knew I was going to go to university, so I said to my dad, and this pissed him off even more, I said, Dad, Dad, trust me, I'll get my degree, the world will be my oyster. You know, I could, I could be anything. I could be an astronaut or Supreme Court judge. This is where I forgot. He knew I was studying drama. <laughs> he wasn't very happy about that. His words were, Comedian, are we, son? Well, you better start somewhere. That was about the time that he went and got my birthday present. 18? So he goes and there's some clanging and some bashing around in the kitchen. Now, my house, right, to get to the kitchen, you've got to go, or to get to the living room where we were talking, you've got to go through the kitchen, and then you've got to go through our utility room to get to his office. Now my dad, being a serious man, he always locked everything away in the office. Christmas time, all the presents in the office. No one going downstairs past 10 o'clock, TV off, everything, everyone to bed. So, presents in the office. So he comes out, all this clanging and bashing and smashing, comes out with this present, my present. It's about three to four feet tall, slim. As it gets to the top, it kind of opens out, it has this kind of head on it. <laughs> I'll tell you, it turns out my dad's a comedian too. <laughs> he bloody wrote Nimbus 3000 on the side of it, like I was going to win Harry Potter or something. He definitely knew I was going to do drama, didn't he? So there I was, with my new broom, and he said to me, I spoke to my friend Bill in Cambridge. You'll be doing a spot of cleaning for him, all right? Now, to start you off, it's a fucking mess in the kitchen. You better get to it. Anyway, I came to Cambridge, and he drove me up here. That was lecture number two, all right? This was going downhill. After lecture number two, he then did something that I've never seen my dad do before in his life. Got out his wallet. Yeah. 
Like, take a minute, take a minute, drink that in. Got out his wallet. Never seen my old man do this in my life. Looking at this thing, some battered old, battered old leather wallet. Go to open up, prise it apart. You could hear the leather screech. He blew the dust off it. Now, you know, getting money out of my old man was like getting some from the missus, right? It's not going to be much, and it's going to cost you. <laughs> so he opens up his wallet. What do I know? There's a watch of 20s. A watch of 20s? Sitting right there. My eyes bulged. My chin hit the floor. Time stood still, I'll tell you. I was, as he was reaching in, I was gobsmacked. Right? I was just watching and watching as he went past the 20s. <laughs> fucking past them, right? Pulled out what can only describe as a 20 year old condom. <laughs> there it was, 20 years old, never used, still in the packet. Brand was mammoth, anyone heard of them? So I had to chisel with the ice <laughs> Gave it to me, puts it in my hand, and says, Son, don't spend it all at once. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out he was a comedian. <laughs> what do I know? Anyway, so I was here in Cambridge, and this is where the broom comes in. I was here in Cambridge, and Cambridge is beautiful. And I, I love this place. I see all the, the Cambridge universities and the buildings are beautiful. And I was there on the front lines, you know, cleaning up the blood and sick from our lovely binge drinking culture. I see everyone here. Your beers and whatnot. Yeah, don't make me clean that up later, alright? So there I was, cleaning that up, and that's when I realised cleaning wasn't paying the bills. Thought long and hard. But what could I do uh, to try and earn some extra money? I started turning tricks. No, not, not like the way you hecklers would pick up on. Not, not that kind of turning tricks. I mean, with the broom. Let me show you. Now, I also want to say, these tricks that I've learned, I had a much higher ceiling. <laughs> so if this goes awry, um, just bear with me, okay? Just so knock the speakers over, alright? Yeah, this is my Nimbus. Remember, I can fly with this. <laughs> I'm finished there, folks. What? Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Run, you might want to move back, you might want to move back. I did this in my garden earlier, I ran across the garden. About 10 metres to try and catch this thing. Right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't quite Impressive, apart from I just got blinded. So, uh, 